We've had one episode where we talked about music breathing within faster and slower speeds. And we had another where we told you to quantize everything to fuck. How do you combine these two ideas? Being on the grid and being fluid. Technical precision and musical flow. Well, the answer is... The tempo track. The tempo track gives you a great tool to shape your music, like you're a conductor. Let's recap tempo shortly one last time. What you're hearing is one of the great musical masterpieces of the 20th century. Gustav Holst's Jupiter from the Planet. Now, ever since its creation, this work has been played by different orchestras all over the world and within a spectrum of wildly different tempi. The recording in the background is pretty slow. It's about 100 BPM. Holst himself recorded this piece in 1926 at around 150 BPM. Here's another faster recording. This one's about 140 BPM. To be honest, for me, none of these three tempos feels right. My favorite recordings are somewhere in between, around 130 BPM. So who's right? Me or Holst? Well, what I'm trying to get across here is that there is no right or wrong. Tempo is a very personal interpretation and different tempi do have different feelings. Now you're creating your own music and you have your own ideas about your music. You've written a melody or an arrangement or whatever, but now it's time for you to change your perspective. You can take your composer hat off and put your conductor hat on and think about how you want to interpret your own music. What tempo do you want it to have? When do you want it to speed up or slow down? Your digital baton is the tempo track. When creating orchestral mock-ups, we're in a technological world with DAWs and sample libraries and so on. So the tendency is to be on the grid and at a fixed tempo. So there's a strong pull towards a very static program type of music. But you aren't stuck here. Your music can have different sections with different tempi within the same project. Even more, it can speed up or slow down. And for programming these different tempo changes or tempo events, we use the tempo track, a track that has all the tempo info for your project. Let's have a look at a piece of music here. This is an audio demo that I've composed for a new string library. As it stands, this project has no tempo information yet. So I'm going to program the tempo track. This piece has four different sections, and I already know that each section should have its own tempo. In Logic, I open up the tempo track, which is in the global tracks area up here, or using the G shortcut. In other DAWs, this could be a bit different, but once they're in, they look similar to this. Now I just need to add in my tempos of the different sections. 85 BPM here, 79 BPM here, and then 72 BPM here towards the end. Okay, that was simple. But let's take a look at this third section, which is at 79 BPM. I'm definitely starting at the right tempo, but the character of this music feels wrong to me if we don't have some life and some breathing in the tempo. The first two bars sound fine, but by the third bar of this phrase, it's not moving fast enough. After the first two bars, I want to speed up a bit, and then I want to come down a little afterwards. This is subtle, so we're talking about very little tempo changes here. I'm going to jump to 81 BPM on bar 20, then I'll put in 80 BPM on bar 22, and back to 79 BPM again on bar 23. Good, okay, we're getting there. And I like the subtle but the deliberate feeling of the expressive tempo now. This is how I feel this piece should come across. But the next section at the end is 72 BPM. And I know that a seven BPM jump is gonna be a bit jarring. So we need to do a ritardando, a gradual decrease in speed over a few bars before the new section. One way I can do this is to program an easy one BPM decrease every bar starting from 79 until we get to 72. One BPM each bar feels very natural. The other way to do this is a bit simpler. I can use a tempo curve and just put in a line from one tempo point to another. 
So in this case, I drag this point here until it makes a nice straight line between 79 and 72 BPM. You can have even more control over these tempo changes. It can be a linear ramp or whatever shape that you need. Usually they start as a linear line, but you can adjust them to slow down more gradually at the start than the end, or more aggressively at the start, ending the curve more softly, or any way that you like. So the music is feeling pretty good already, but here in my fourth section, there's a solo cello that's leading the phrasing, and I really wanna have a push and pull feeling in the music. So the music speeds up and then slows down again. This is the area where I want this to happen. So I program my tempo track for an accelerando, speeding up, and then a ritardando right after that, slowing down. By programming your tempo track, you can bring your orchestral mock-up to life and have it breathe in and out and be the conductor of your own music. And while the tempo track is a great artistic way of improving your music, it's also an absolute technical necessity when scoring to picture. If you're writing a film score, your music will be intentionally hitting certain moments of the picture, in sync. For example, in an action scene, you might want your musical beats to hit the cuts or the important moments in that scene. In the creation of a movie, it's commonplace that the edit gets changed often, even when you've already finished the score for a scene. So the issue is, you can't leave your music as it is because now it's not in sync anymore and it's missing some hit points. You need to conform your music to the new edit. Of course, you could cut out parts of your music, but this could ruin your musical structure. These small edit changes can also be solved with small adjustments, without changing the structure of the music as a whole. If the changes aren't huge, then the easiest way to fix this is to program tempo changes in the tempo track. We could try changing the whole tempo of the cue. In some cases this might work, but in many cases it won't be enough to get everything back in sync. So we need to put in some new tempo events to make this work. The first part of the scene might be unchanged, so we want to keep the music as it was, and at the same tempo. In the second part, we see our hit point coming up, but the music doesn't land in the right place anymore. That hit point is arriving earlier. To get this to work again, we speed up the tempo of a small area, so only a few bars, somewhere in the section before the hit point. So the music happens earlier and then everything is back where it belongs. After the hit point, the tempo is back to its original value. In this case, we're in sync again. But the situation could be harder. What if the edit is changed to a degree that small adjustments won't do the job? Imagine that now you have to bring the tempo down gradually as new shots have been inserted in the second half of the scene, and this second part is now longer. Now you could just bring the tempo down of this part, but this would sound weird. You would hear the tempo change, which we want to avoid. So now we have to gradually bring the tempo down. As mentioned earlier, we could program a ramp, and things might move back to good sync points and get the end of the cue in the right place again. All good. However, there is an issue with this. What if the edit changes again? Programming another ramp in a ramp can become a technical nightmare. This is going to take ages, and importantly, it has to be precise. So there is an alternative, which is programming manual tempo events, bar by bar, to gradually speed up or down as we need. And this ends up looking like a staircase. This means if a new edit change happens within one of our tempo ramps, we have precise control of exactly where we're starting editing the tempo from again, to get our new section back in sync. In film scoring, it's not that we never use the ramps, but the manual way has proven quicker and easier in the long run, as the edit is literally changing all of the time. The locked picture does not exist anymore. This time has passed. As it's cumbersome to go through trial and error when we're programming manual tempo events, most DOWs offer some technical help or tools for this. That can be warping the grid, or something like Smart Tempo, 
or just calculating the difficult changes between bars of music. Your DAW can do the math for you and work out that you need to be at 127.62 BPM instead of 125 in order to get your sequence back into place, which is useful if that sequence needs to keep a static tempo for whatever reason. Let me give you one final thought on tempo and the tempo track. So far, we've been talking about the natural expression of tempo in music like a conductor. Let's say you've recorded some music with a live ensemble, maybe with only the conductor as your guide for the tempo. So no grid, no click. This is a great way of getting that real musical expression into the tempo. But what happens when you need to add to it or record other elements on top of that? This is more common than you'd think. Choirs don't record well with headphones on, for example, so they're often done without a click. And you may want a musician to interpret the music for themselves. But even in this case, the tempo track comes in handy again. But we need to program it afterwards and get it in sync with our recording. In this case, the tempo track will be the click track for our new recordings. So I'll give you a good example of this with something that I've done. During lockdown, I couldn't get musicians together, and I wanted to record some harp and violin duets that I'd written. In this case, I wanted the musician's interpretation of the piece and their tempo rather than my own. So I didn't program a tempo track beforehand, and I recorded the harp first without the violin and without any click track. Then I edited the harp, and I programmed a new click track and tempo map for the piece to the harp recording. After that, this was sent to my violinist, who could then play in sync to my new click track based on the harpist interpretation. So even though I didn't record everyone at the same time, these pieces have a natural and fluid expression in the tempo. Do you want to know how this is technically done? Let me know in the comments if you'd like an advanced video on creating a click track like this. And please do share your personal experiences with how you deal with the tempo track. See you in the next episode.